Hi. Today's story is probably a story that you might have read if you're one that reads through the entire Bible from cover to cover, and it comes in as one of these little stories in the middle. It comes from the book of Leviticus. Now, we studied generally about Leviticus a little while ago, where we looked at the various laws that God had established for his people Israel. We realized there are three types of laws, and many of these laws had to do with the religious structures and systems that God established for his worship. Leviticus has a lot of those laws, and laws established for his people and setting up the tabernacle and how that was done. That also happens in the end, the second half of Exodus. So we have Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Today, I'm through this whole series this week, we're, we're looking at a number of narratives, a number of stories that are found in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. And as we look at these, there, there are very few that are found in the book of Leviticus. But there is one that we will look at today, and that's Leviticus chapter 10. Feel free, I'm not going to read the passage for you, feel free to read it on your own, check where I've told it to you correctly, or where I've added things, or maybe left out some things that you think are important, feel free to let me know. So Leviticus chapter 10. In this story, we have Aaron, who is the high priest of all of Israel. The tabernacle has been set up, and I have this wonderful model that, that I brought home. So, so this wonderful model of the tabernacle. We, we, you've seen this before, and if you made this, Kudos, this is the one that was, you know, that was picked out for the illustration in today's today's lesson. So, um, so the tabernacle, the priests would be living in front of the main entrance to the tabernacle. The priests were given very specific requirements of what they were to do, when they were supposed to do it, and how they were to, how they were to, to do it. So these priests would be living here. Aaron would have lived here, along with he had four sons, the scriptures tell us. And in today's story, we have two of his sons. We're not sure which sons they are in the birth order, but Nadab and Abihu, both were sons of Aaron, and they, in the very beginning of chapter 10, burned incense in a manner that God did not authorize. And when they did that, it was contrary to God's commands for them. And so fire came out and consumed them. and They died. The assumption is that when God spoke, or assumption is not the wrong word, but when God spoke, he spoke through the Ark of the Covenant. These men would have been somewhere they might have been in the Holy of Holies, or they might have been in the inter front court. But when he spoke, God is, according to Jewish tradition, God spoke through the cherubim that are found on the top of the Ark of the Covenant. And when these two men sinned, the fire of God came and erupted out and consumed, the scriptures say, consumed these two men and they died immediately. God expected his priests to serve him in a manner in which he demanded. He expected complete obedience first time. And when that didn't happen, he judged. It did not take long after the giving of the law or even during the giving of the law for the priestly family to enter into a state of sin. And God judged that sin decisively and quickly. Throughout half of Exodus and all of Leviticus, it's filled with laws for God's people to obey. And these men broke the ceremonial law that God had established. These were requirements by God in how he was to be worshipped. This was not a moral law. We don't have laws telling us today on how we're to burn incense, or even if we are to burn incense. And so this was not a law that was given to all people for all times in all locations around the world. This was a ceremonial law. 
a ceremonial law had its specific purpose for the period and time with which it was. That said, God still expects us in today's time to follow him in obedience. God still expects us to be holy. Be holy as I am holy. God says in the New Testament, which is totally applicable to us today. In the previous two chapters, in Leviticus chapter 8 and chapter 9, at least 10 times we read the words, the Lord commanded. When God commands something, it is he expects it to be obeyed. Nadab and Abihu did not obey the command of God. Let me read for you from Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12, starting to read at verse uh, 28. Uh, Hebrews 12, 28 and 29. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For God is a consuming fire. Hebrews was written during the New Testament period. It was written to the early church. God still has expectations and requirements for his people living today. He has expectations on how we are to worship him. We are to be grateful for the kingdom that we anticipate God providing for us, a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And this is the reason we offer our worship to God in reverence and awe. And here is a case with Nadab and Abihu, where God is a consuming fire. At the beginning of new periods in redemptive history, God judged sin in a dramatic way. He would move and put people to death as a result of what we might consider today to be just a, a small little sin. And this was done so that people would learn to fear him. Think about the time in Joshua. Joshua chapter 7, the people of Israel had just crossed the Jordan, moved into the promised land. They had destroyed the first city of Jericho, and they were given very specific instructions of what to do and what not to do. It wasn't a law for all people, all times, and all locations. It was specific to that city and the destruction of Jericho. Achan chose not to obey. And when Achan chose not to obey, he took some of the things of Jericho on his own, and the people suffered. Achan, along with his family, ultimately died as a result of their sin. Move across time into Acts chapter 5. In Acts chapter 5, we hear the story, or we read the story, of Ananias and Sapphira. Now, Joseph of Cyprus um, was a wealthy man who had some land, and he sold that land and offered it before the, the apostles. And that money was used. He didn't offer the land. He offered the money that he sold. And that money was used to aid the church. Ananias and Sapphira looked at that and said, hey, how can we get some of that praise from men? And so they sold some land as well, but only gave a portion of the money. They said they gave the whole thing. In other words, they lied. <laughs> Was it their prerogative to keep all of the money of themselves? Yes. Could they have given some of the money and kept some of it for themselves? Yes. But they said they gave it all when they did keep some of it for themselves. For themselves. And because of their sin, in two separate occasions, first, the husband, Ananias, died immediately when he was confronted with his lie. And Sapphira died immediately when she was confronted with her lie. God judges sin, especially during the beginning of new periods where he 
introduces um, and expects holinesses. God still expects holiness for us today. But he also ex extends to us grace. That grace comes to us so that we may come to him in true faith and repentance, and that repentance leads to us, leads us to obedience. I trust that this unique story of Nadab and Abihu will encourage you to respond to God who calls you to live a life of holiness and faith and obedience before him. Have a great day.